Chris had guys yell at the stands. We we had guys knocking guys out in the stands for him. Yeah, yeah. section twenty seven, fucking uh, in the loads. We got Frankie the Fixer up there. <laughs> yeah. Fucking yelling, Nylon sucks up. Frankie the Fixer, load seven. Yeah, 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 that's the guy. Yeah, right there. Bang, he's out for. Some of you get sucked. When I stepped on the ice, I never backed down, and I never stayed down. And I was vicious, and I was malicious, and I don't care. <laughs> First of all, being from Charlestown, people don't know, you know, two of us, obviously, best friends. Yeah. Um, and and people don't know the neighborhood you grew up in. I always found this just incredible. Uh, making it to the NHL, you, uh, and yeah, uh, did you have a lengthy career in the NHL? No. You had... Um, Played 11 games with St. Louis and four with the Bruins. Wow. Now, uh, you were just an awesome goal scorer. You scored everywhere you went. Yeah. But just to get to the NHL from where you grew up in Charlestown, in the, uh, the center of Boston, and the neighborhood you grew up in, growing up without a dad, your dad passing away while you were in your mother's yeah. stomach as a um, a, a little baby boy about to come into the world. I, I just found that your story so amazing. But people don't know the Charlestown neighborhood. Give give us a, a, a little rundown on that one square mile of of real estate. Well, the, for people who don't know what Charlestown is, when I grew up, uh, very blue collar, majority Irish. Uh, very tough, tough town, meaning you played, you went down the corner, there was fights everywhere. You know what I mean? And it was everybody was based on where you grew up. Like I grew up in Hay Square, which was near the projects, right outside liquor store. You went up the street, it was Monument Street. That was their crew. You went to Files Park. Everywhere was packed with kids on every corner. And that was their corner. That's where you were associated with. Now, the fights break out with each other there all the time. We played sports against each other, ball hockey, might as well have been the Bruins Canadians. But if you were in town Boston later on and you were in a bar in Faneuil Hall, as you know those bars, yeah. if something broke out, the same crew would jump in for each other. Yeah. The Charleston guys bars. would say be against South Boston. Salty, yeah. How, where did, yeah. Chris, how far did you grow up from? I grew 20 minutes. up from Jimmy about, yeah, about 20 minutes to the other side of the city. We were kind um, of located, Tim, in Charleston, separated from everything else. And okay. we used to think Chris, well, he's from West Roxbury, we used to think that was rich Irish for crime. Yeah, we don't know yeah. why, but that was half. Spoon fed. We're going to get those guys. Spoon fed for sure. Yeah, next <laughs> Two thing. toilet Irish. Yeah, <laughs> well, we didn't know Irish. that was a chip we used, but I could see the Boston Gardens from my kitchen window, okay? And we knew the Boston, old Boston Gardens better than we knew school. We were in and out of that building for Celtics games, Bruins games, through the roof, through fire escapes, everywhere. We knew how to get in and out of that place better than anywhere. We owned the place. Then later on in life, I was working for the Bull Gang, taking the floor off for the Bruins Celtics game in high school, putting it down. I worked at the Bruins Pro Shop. Then eventually got a paycheck from the Boston Bruins. So I knew that place very, very well. We'd walk there, walk home. The, you know, everything was right there. Was, it was a tough, tough town to grow up in. Um, you know, a lot of guys that I know and guys Chris know didn't make it out of there, meaning got in trouble, went down the wrong road, and very, very good athletes that, that could have went on and done stuff. And it's sad, you know, a lot of guys end up in jail. A lot of guys end up dead. It was real. It was real. And no, that's of, real. It's yeah, real. Jim, you, we hear a lot of people say that. I grew up in a town. Yeah. My friends are dead or yeah. in jail. Yeah. Yeah. Now, this is real. Listen, <laughs> Tim, the town, the yeah. movie, the town with Ben Affleck, you yeah. know, it's about the brink, you know, Robin Brinks yeah. trucks and all Banks that. And all anyway, that, yeah. that's a real, that's the real deal. Yeah. And a lot of child sound guys, that's what they did. A lot of them, uh, there was that that um, that law from the generations before, before that. That's what these guys did. They they robbed banks. They robbed brink trucks. And then the next generation would come in. It was almost a badge like, of honor to, mm -hmm. to to rob an, a, a brink truck or a bank. It's like somebody said before that's doing life in jail. I don't have to mention his name. Said if we grew up around the town with doctors and lawyers, we might have been doctors and lawyers. That was their badge of honor, so to say you know, to rob a car, do whatever, okay? All 
majority come from good families and, uh, you know, broke a lot of hearts. But as crazy as the town was, some of the nicest people in the world who had nothing would take you in and give you give you something to eat, give you a jacket if somebody was lacking a jacket. So a lot of caring, good people. And a lot of times our neighborhood got a bad reputation. You know, I grew up throwing forced bus in and the city of Boston, you know, just had a bad reputation and it got worse and worse. But the town has changed a lot now that I remember in the 80s, people say, oh, you live in Charlestown, like it was down. Now everybody yeah. lives in Charlestown or South Boston, <laughs> like, you know, and you can't afford to friggin' uh, buy a little studio as big as the bathroom for crying out loud. Before, nobody wanted to live there, you know? Yeah. Now you can't afford to live there. But, you know, I came from, like I say, Chris, my dad was passed away. My mother, you know, raised me, <clears throat> and I had uh, two older sisters and a brother. And like I say, you know, you did your own thing, but a lot of times in the back of my mind, I know I could have went down that wrong road. And all the times I had that little thing in my head saying, don't hurt your mother. She used to always say that to me. Don't ever bring bad news home here or embarrass the family. And I was no angel, believe me. But that kept me going the right way, you know. And, uh, you know, she was my mother, father. My my two grandparents are already gone before. So she was everything to me. And uh, she, she used to want to tell me, hey, you're on the street. Don't ever back down. You got to stand up for yourself or you're you'll get abused the rest of your life. You know, I remember saying one time, hey, yeah. the kid's five, six, seven, eight years old, bigger than you, pick up something and hit him with that. You know, that was a, that's how you had to do it, was survival in those days. And you remember how we learned the football player. Yeah. Grew up in Charlestown. He got in trouble. He had to move out with Forrest Bussin. And I was watching something John Madden was talking about him. He said, wherever Howie comes from, they raise, raise tough men. And Howie was speaking, saying he wanted to be a hockey player his whole, his whole life because everybody played ball hockey. And how he said, who didn't take a beating once or twice or more in that town? You know, I mean, everybody did. You know, yeah, that was the way it went. Yeah. It, it's, it's and I don't talk about it a lot, but I know you know about because you hung there. And yeah. I always tell you, hey, Chris Lyon got his toughness from his father and hanging in Charleston, not West Roxbury. That's what I always yeah. say. There's no and question. Around. But no question. Yeah. It was a tough, tough town, Chris. And you know it. I know it. And I know a lot of people talk. Yeah, where I grew up, this guy got arrested. This is real. You know, this stuff was real. That I still have friends that are not with us right now because of bad situations they're either in jail or dead you know so that's is that there any that other <clears throat> any other guys that played in the nhl out of charleston yeah i'll tell you right now jack o'callahan oh okay. yeah i know Jack. okay you want to talk about all roads lead to charleston so fitzgerald's mother and father from charleston kachuk's mother and father from charleston the yandel's father from charleston hey uh, hayes's mother oh. from charleston that's yeah. they're like my relatives for crying my brother tommy married Kevin and Jimmy's mom, uh, mom's sister, you know, and that's why when Jimmy was coming out of school, people, oh, how do you go with the Rangers? Well, we're up playing with Kevin. They're like family and best friends. <laughs> it was his decision, you know, and he, that's why it was easy to walk in the dress room when Kevin Hayes, like a relative, walking in his dress room. As we all know, walking in that dress room for the first time is a tough thing to do as a rookie. Yeah. You know, well, so. Tim, just a little bit on Charlestown. It's one square mile. The Bunker Hill Monument is there which is um, like the Washington Monument, mm-hmm. same thing. And uh, the Battle of Bunker Hill, the British and the uh, the Minutemen that, uh, yeah. of Massachusetts had the Battle of Bunker Hill. Anyway, in that one square mile, uh, back in when Bobby Orr came to yeah. Boston and, and became such a big thing, they ended up building hockey rinks in different yeah. neighborhoods in the city yeah. to keep the kids off the street. Yeah. And they exactly. built one right in Charlestown. And that was Jimmy, right? That's this is where you learn to play hockey. This is where you you kind of where you got your start. I got my start. Uh, Chris is so right. I had an older brother and we lived in six apartments. We'd call it the compound. We'd say, God forbid there was ever a fire, there'd be 150 people homeless. Because we just we, it was all family. <laughs> six apartments all living, all doors open. Um, so I had my brother Tommy, my cousin Mark, my cousin Billy, they were older. So the Bobby Orr era was coming. That's all I seen was the hockey. I'd be the one holding the TV with the rabbit ears with the tinfoil on it to make sure the TV wasn't jumping. Mm-hmm. Remember those days, Chris? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, WSBK TV 38. So I seen them doing it. And our ball hockey games, like everybody in the corner would be on there playing all day, all night until you couldn't see no more. And that's where I really learned how to play. Then we started, they started hockey in a church league at St. Catharines, right in the progress where I hung out. And on Sundays, my goal was, I was on a little rink. I was wobbling all over the fall down. My goal was to make it to the big rink where my brother and my cousins played. 
And that's basically where the hockey started on, on there with Father Smith started and a lot of good Charlestown players uh, that play like Michael Fiddler from Charlestown was playing around Chris's time. That was yeah. like, uh, like we were looking up to Michael Fiddler. Like we wanted to be there so we could identify when, when the North stars come in town, everybody wanted to be see Michael Fiddler at, at the pregame skate. There'd be a thousand Charlestown kids in the stands watching the practice for kind of, you know, we pulled behind them. And there was a lot of good players, like you say, Jackie O'Callaghan played at BU with Mark Fiddler and then when they won the national title, Billy Carter. Um, a lot of good Charleston players throughout college, Timmy, and a lot of guys that could have went on and played college but went down the wrong road that were really, really good players that ended up getting themselves in trouble. Uh, you know, Chris knows some of the guys his age that were yeah. tough, tough kids and just didn't make it. You know, they end up in the wrong route and boom, the, you know, didn't play for whatever reason. But for one square mile... We were right there in the heart. Like I say, I could be at the Boston Gardens in a five-minute walk. Bobby York coming in there, you know, they started putting the NBC rinks in the different towns, and had we had no thing. It was wide open, so it just had a roof on it. So we could hop the fence at night, clean the clean the ice with, with however we did it, just play all day, you know, until the cops come. You know what I mean? That's how we got in the rink. It was closed. We hopped over the fence, throw the bag over, boom, you play. It was like we're there all night. It was to the lights couldn't see. So Bobby O was a big thing, and it helped us, the city kids, do something to have a place to go to skate and all that stuff. And ice was scarce because now everybody wanted to skate. You know, everybody wanted to be Bobby O. So Digger, you start, you you, you get your start in the Charlestown rink, and uh, you went to high school, uh, Columbus, but played there. And you were always pretty good in school. You had you got good grades. You end up getting a scholarship to Memory Mac College. And yeah. what was that like? Your first time leaving Charlestown, and going up to Memory Mac, because that, that must have been like going across the country for you. I tell you what, I went to Crystal Columbus. My brother and two sisters went to Charlestown High. Then the school system went crazy, yeah. as you know. So went to, I went to Columbus in the North End, which I could walk over the bridge. We call it Charleston Bridge. The North End kids would call the uh, we call the North End Bridge. They call it Charleston Bridge. So, anyways, I go there. I was an okay student, Chris. I wasn't. My thing was sports. I tell you what, the Red Sox did, the Bruins did the night before. I'd be up all night watching them, disgusted that they lost. You know, but I always could play hockey. I was recruited from BU. I was recruited from Harvard. I was recruited from all those all the schools. BC. They thought I was a crazy kid from Charleston. Because my SATs weren't that good. Uh, okay. I didn't test well on my SATs. And one time, Billy Cleary, the Harvard coach, the legendary Harvard coach, said, Between your SAT scores and the kid from South Boston who played in the NHL, Brian Noonan, combined, we can't get one of you as a visit over Harvard. <laughs> 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 you know? So then Jackie Parker later on in life said one of his biggest regrets was stereotyping somebody when he was the kid that graduated in four years and the guys I brought in the BU. Never graduated. And Jackie thought, geez, here we go. I just had four of them in Charlestown. We just went out, but they were crazy. I don't know if I can put up another one. I don't think he's going to make it through school. But Ronnie Anderson, who was my coach at Merrimack, a BU alumni, who works for the Hawks, has three Stanley Cup rings, stayed on me, stayed on me with Jay Leach, who was the assistant coach. His brother Stevie, you know, played the NHL. And they stayed on me and... They kind of saying, make a decision. I didn't know what, what Squiff's Merrimack was. I lived in Charleston. We never left the town. So Ronnie goes, are you going to make it? I said, no, Ronnie, I'm joining the Marines, <laughs> right? He said, Marines? I said, yeah. I just wanted to stop calling me. I just wanted to read. So I'm playing ball hockey down the projects in the cage. And like, you got to be in school in uh, two days. I go, I ain't going, Ronnie. I don't want to go. And Jay Leach, I don't want to go. I was nervous all of a sudden now to leave the town. I never left the town. Yeah. We, we were comfortable in that town. I drove up to Merrimack. I'm saying, holy jeez. People are showing up with these foot lockers with clothes in them, fucking bags. We're getting dropped <laughs> off by my mother and my sister with a like, little duffel bag. What the fuck am I doing here, right? I walk in a room, they got pillows there. I don't know. I don't know my feeling with the college. <clears throat> I go in there. I said, two days, I'm out of here. I'm on 125 Thumb at home, Chris, the Charlestown, right? Ronnie Innocent called my mother. My mother goes, he's out playing ball hockey, Ronnie, if I was you. I come down to get him because he ain't going back. They come down and got me. Back back to school I went. I brought a <laughs> sleeping bag and pillows. <laughs> but I was out of I was out of my element. Everybody's yeah. like everybody credit cards and buying this. I got nothing in my fucking pocket. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I walk around and say, what am I doing here? 
you know, everybody knew each other, knew each other, went to prep school. Or whatever. I was at the club, was getting pushed through the fucking doors. I don't know what the hell. All of a sudden, these so classes. then hockey starts, though. And then I was in, I got counsel. Then yeah. you were fine, right? It's fine. Yeah. But at first, like, you don't know. It's just like my first training camp. I tell the right. story all the time. I go to training camp. I didn't know what the Quebec League was, the Western Hockey League, or the Ontario League was. I'm yeah. in there from fucking Charlestown, right? I'm in there. Everybody knows everybody. I'm an American, and their thing is, oh, the privileged one went to college was fucking rich bastard or something, right? Yeah. They don't talk to me. I always tell a story to guys who I'm friends with now, like Twister and Chase and Dave Thomas. I said, you last those didn't talk to me for 30 fucking days, I said. <laughs> then I got in a fight, and Twister says, where'd you learn how to fight? Fight? I'll show you where I learned how to fight on the off the ice. <laughs> and they all came to Charlestown. There was no social media back then. They learned. Oh, Jesus. One of them, Chaser, Twister. Yeah. I said, Chase, I hear the stories you tell me you're from the tough town out those tough streets of Porcupine Plains. Porcupine Plains. Porcupine Plains. <laughs> I said, let me tell you, they're not making movies about Porcupine Plains. Okay? <laughs> I said, I'll walk you through things, kid. You who's going to school us will be taking your fucking meal money, I told him. Right? <laughs> yeah. But they, 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 I always say, I said, the only one, all your cousins, I call them all the cousins. Anybody from West League Chase is fucking relative somehow. I said, the only one that could make it in Charleston was Wendell Clark because he shut his mouth. He was humbled. That's the only cousin that could make it in Charleston, I tell him. I bust yeah. his balls all the time. But they became lifelong friends, but it was their game. I was the privileged American kid with not a dime in my pocket waiting for a fucking yeah. per beam check. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. all. I never had any money in the bank or nothing. No credit. Yeah, it's stuff. like you didn't learn how to fight. You learned how to survive. Play. Survive. Right? Like, survive right? like it's like, fuck. I, I, you, you, well, you ever you, think like, if so if you didn't have hockey, you ever think what you'd be doing? Would you probably be in jail? I hate to say no, that. And I'm not, yeah, I'm just saying. I mean, I hate to say that because I had come from a strong home, but a lot of people yeah. came from a strong home that ended up in jail. You know? Yeah. Um, who knows, Tim? You know what I mean? Because sports was the thing I wanted to do. You know what I mean? I wanted to do. That was my whole thing in my head. I loved it. I love watching the Bruins, Red Sox. I took a personal if they lost. Uh, but I thank God every day, you know, we were raised with faith, too. My mother used to always teach, you know, we, you know so I used to say, I'm going to do it. I don't know what I'd do, Timmy. I don't know. I really don't. I hate to think about it. I'm not going to sit there, oh, yeah, I'd be in jail with my other friends. and with the, I don't know. I know. I hope. I hope it would have been right, but I could be in there, too. And that's why I don't knock anybody that's been through whatever they've been through. You don't know their situation. And we grew up where it was survival. We didn't know it. We didn't know we were poor. You know, we didn't know any of that. We had our home and friends and my mother was the best, you know, and I, you know, I used to hear the stories from my cousin. Oh, you're spoiled. I said, spoiled. We have no car. When I was younger, my mother would throw money to the cabbie to take me to the rink with scavis on. Okay. With my skates on. Six o'clock, seven o'clock, bangs on a rink. I mean, I'm only a young kid. Today, they'll probably arrest my mother, send me out at seven years old, eight years old. Like, she didn't <laughs> drive. We didn't have a car in the family. I got so, when I, when I pull up to the rink, probably seven, eight, I used to say, pull by the rink, pull by a little bit, go down there. I don't want to see anybody coming out of the cab. I was embarrassed. Not because my mother did that, because I didn't want everybody was throwing up with their parents. I'm just getting out of the cab with my bag and scabbards <laughs> on. As a young kid, I think back to that stuff. I, you know, I said, wow, it's crazy. You must have really, really wanted to play. And I remember my mother, Chris, will you remember the old yeah. longshoreman hooks, Chris? Do you remember those? Yeah. You know, the thing, and all my family were longshoremen. My mother's hands hurt. <laughs> She'd get one of those hooks to pull my skates tight as a young yeah. kid. <laughs> it was something. I love yeah. this. I do. Because the, the best part about all this, Jimmy, is that you could tell that you're proud you're from there. Oh yeah, right. Like it's not like you, you, t you know. And I think that's such that mean that just says a lot. Um, yeah, I wouldn't change that. I, I wouldn't trade. <clears throat> excuse me, I wouldn't trade my voice because I had problems before my my chest. But I wouldn't trade growing up there and experience for anything in the world, mm -hmm. anything in the world. And I gave back to the town. Um, when I was done playing, I went back coaching into the Charleston youth hockey, and. Stay with those kids because somebody coached me and all that stuff. And I kept the kids. Then we played the travel, triple A, they called it. They didn't have that when I was younger. And one of my proudest things is nine out of the guys, two kids played up, went on to get Division One scholarships and play. Four of them were drafted. My son Jimmy, my son Nolan, Matt Grizzlick, and Brendan Collier. Four guys drafted. Nine guys, which was our goal 
to play high school, then you're good enough to get to college. If you make pro, that's great. Let's concentrate on getting your school and have believed that you could play at prep or high school, then you could go on to college and play. And I'll, a lot of them play in the Hockey East or whatever, ECAC, but those kids today thank me every time. From Matt Grizzlick to a kid that, you know, went to college, Devin Tringali, a perfect example, was cut from a program. We won the championship two years in a row, so they have a free skate in the final out there. I didn't know the Tringalis. They were from Medford. And I said, wow, the kid can skate. Yeah, he's playing for the uh, – he's on the practice squad. That's it. I said, well, we might have an opening. If you like to come, you can start with us. But I guarantee the kid's going to play. The pilots go, Jesus, you can't play for the team to finish last place. How the hell is he going to play for your team? I said, you don't know me from a hole in the wall, but here's my offer. So he get on the practice squad. Halfway through the season, somebody got hurt. Devin Tregali went on to become a captain at Harvard, at Harvard College for a kid that was ready to give up. I wasn't sure that it was just going to be an alternate as a, as a second, first year Pee Wee. Come on and went there, had a good career, and he's doing well in the business world. Those are the means that, that I, I love hearing stories like that, Tim. Yeah, you know well, I mean? you, you, listen, you gave back, and that's awesome. And, and to, to come back to your neighborhood you grew up in and, and give back and, sh you know, show those kids that there's a possibility yeah. and there's a, yeah. a way out of town. But in your career, you, you play college, you blow mm. through college, you, you put up the numbers, and you get to St. Louis, you end up going to Peoria. Now, you had a fucking crazy yeah. – Team there, like oh. that's the first thing Tim said to me. He said, "I looked at the team there. I looked at the psychos. staff. My God, <laughs> Twister Chase. You had Plager as the coach, yeah, right? Yeah. Talk about a tough team. And you were tough. You could yeah. score goals. You had forty, what, forty nine goals, two times, forty eight goals. Yeah, I like, never, my, my first year, I, um, like you say, we had we had Chase Twist, Lyle Oderline, Odie in and out of the lineup. Dave Richter could be Craig Cox, could be Todd Yellen. God rest his soul." Mark Somier from up in uh, the Quebec League. Tough, tough kid. Oh, what a squad. I had 14 majors my first year. I made the first team IHL All-Star team. There was no games. And I always say, you know who the other guys on the first team were? There was only one team. We finished eighth out of nine teams. But nobody would blow us out of the building. They got 5-1 and shut down quick, okay? <laughs> they didn't want to be the 7-1 because the game would last an hour and a half. I had like 149 penalty minutes for fighting. I didn't, I didn't know it, but I didn't think, oh, I'm just a goal scorer. I didn't know. Kaiser didn't. Long story, the left winger was Mark Recchi. The center was Theo Fleury. And the right <laughs> winger was me. That was the first team IHL All-Star team. My knock, and you know it, was I wasn't a great skater. Yeah. I wasn't a great skater. Now, yeah. guys like Charlie Simmer, the big guy in Philadelphia. He wasn't a great skater. Mark, for, but he got an opportunity, though. But Paul, That's what I say about you. He got an opportunity. My situation in St. Louis, I got Brett Hull in front of me, who maybe the, one of the best right wings ever, and Paul McClain, who wasn't a great skater, played with Howard no. Turner, he was in front of me. So that was my that was my luck. I, it wasn't a sniff. I get called up, playing the fourth line. I got played, got played with Bernie Federico one time. We had a goal and assist, whatever. Then I get, I get called up, I'd play with Dave Richter and Craig Cox. Richter was a tough defenseman that he had to let forward. Cox, he was a tough kid. We slide left so much that that's all we did. I love you sitting there, oh boy, I get two shifts a period, right? <laughs> Free shift. Coxie's teaching me how to play blackjack with the clock. He says, say it goes 7.49, so you got a nine. Then the whistle stops again, you got a seven. I can say hit or pass. You know what I mean? He's teaching me how to play blackjack on that chocolate bench. I said, what am I doing here? My whole family was sitting here. Brian Sutter's a coach. I'm getting three shifts a period, right? With Dave Richter, Chris, tough guy, and Craig yeah. Cox. <laughs> there was no sense even playing. I mean, I might as well put our work boots on and just said, let's go right now. Let's fight right now. So that was my thing. When I got sent down, I'd be relieved. Yeah. I'd be, I'd be relieved. I remember my first year, I got called up. It sucks sitting on the bench. Sucks. Right? Sucks. Like, who sucks. likes that? You, your, your line gets called finally, and then there's a penalty. Yeah, it <laughs> sucks. Like, you know, I just sat there. I slide, <laughs> slide right, slide left, slide right, slide left. Right? I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> my first year, I got called up in the playoffs. You know, I rip it up. I have a good year. I make the first team. I, I don't know. So I get called up there. We're playing Chicago first round. Travel with the team. Rod Brindamore just come in from Michigan State. Right? Good kid. After after they get the regulars off the ice, Bob Perry, who I liked a lot, would say, let's go. I'm skating with Cliff Ronning and Gaston Gingras. Two guys that can fucking fly. Okay? Yeah. Bob Berry bagging us in Chicago State, in the old stadium, with a cigarette in his belt. Right? Yeah. Killing us. <laughs> 
Then tells us, hey, I'm gonna back up and leave the regulars alone, right? <laughs> I said, I'll pass, I'll take a cab, right? I couldn't even get down the stairs, the old Chicago State, there was that thing. I was so tired. The, Ronnie and Jingros were skating like, like they had water skis on. I'm like a uh, trying to catch up with these guys. I was like, please, oh, no more of this shit. I had Bob Berry as a coach. Bob, that was yeah. Remember we fit him for Fucking a jacket when his jacket guy. got stolen? Yeah. Bob Berry was coaching with the Canadians. They stole his overcoat. Knuckles makes a call. Uh, Someone chows down. So cold. They got Bob Berry in the back of the guns, fitting him up like he was at uh, Finally's basement, measuring him up for a coat. <laughs> After the game, Bob Berry had a brand new cashmere coat in, in, in his dressing room. Uh, coach coat. Bob will tell you that story, too. Yeah. Because he told me it. But Bob was keeping us, and I was like, oh, my God. That's the year Featherstone cross-checked Roenick in the, in the face. They grew five minutes, and the Blackhawks rolled, and then they beat us in six. And I, got, I went to get home. The next year... I get called up again off and on, and then I get called up for the players. But my last game, we're playing Indianapolis. Daryl Sutter's coach team who won the, won the Turner Cup. They were loaded. Blackhawks fan. I break my wrist. Warren Reichel hits me with a check, breaks my radius. So I got to go out to St. Louis. I got to cast on this big and all that stuff. So I had one of my friends come out and he's going to drive home with me after this playoffs get that. He wants to come out and stay in St. Louis and have a good time. I just been gone for the whole thing. I want to get the hell home. You know what yeah. I mean? Oh, yeah. yeah. I want to go home. And Jackie Sell, Chris, who you know him. Who wants uh, to stay in fucking He Peoria wants to stay have, any have a good time. I'm like, let's get a fucking pussy. I said, no, let's go. So I got a cast on this thing. He never stopped once. I said, Paul, we got a room. I woke up almost in fucking Boston. I don't know what the fuck he did, but we're on Boston. We didn't stop nothing. You know? But uh, yeah, I always say, I wish I had a chance. But I have no regrets. I don't, I'm not one of those guys. I'll tell you a story. Basil McCray. Listen, you made know. it there, Digger. Yeah. You know? You, yeah. you, you no, you I don't have the, no regrets. I tell that to Tim. You know, Tim yeah. played 120 games. I like it. Yeah, just no, to get to the game. NHL. Got 119 right? games, this kid. Yeah. You know, but I tell a story. Basil McCray, I didn't know. The NHL's on strike. Chaser, who was with the alumni, the Blues alumni, set up an event where the alumni is going to play Chaser's junior team, junior Blues. Then we're going to Peoria for a reunion. Keith Kachuk gets on the bus because he said, I want to go there because a kid from my hometown's there, me, me and me, which was very nice. They were on strike. Basil will pray all of them in the ad. I don't know Basil, but later on, Basil writes me a night note. I couldn't believe it. He said, I heard all kinds of stories about you, all good. He goes, not once did you say on that bus, I got fucked, I got screwed. And he said, boy, you did get screwed. <laughs> you know, I'm lucky, yeah. man, you got screwed. And I never spoke like that. I never said, yeah, you did. I never, but I never said, you know, son of took his Western boys. I never complained like that. Not yeah, that yeah. Basil McCray to pick that up like that. I thought it was unbelievable. I never had Basil in my life. Yeah. Well, listen, it, it was obvious. And, and, and you know, we, we all have a story. And, and yeah, I always say I was fortunate and Look grateful. Look at your story. <laughs> yeah. But, Digga, you know, <laughs> I always, story. I have respect for guys that played one Damn fucking right. game in the Everybody league. It is so game. difficult to get there. It's, but, it, people don't have a clue. They don't have you. a Tim will tell What you happened this. in Providence? Oh, so, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Tim. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, like, then you go down to Providence. You I ripped I had another 40 goals. Yeah. What I, happened? Think it, I had 38 goals. I think they called yeah. up everybody but me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I had Michael But they Powell. did call you up, right? They called you up, well, and we got to play year. together. That was my first right? year. That was my yeah, first year. Yeah, yeah, but remember, we got to play together. You were my roommate. And then you got the sucker pass from who? Copy. Copy, Bobby Coppina. Yep. And you who always fucking... apologizes to this day. Like, not his fault. I could have bailed out, but yeah. I didn't. And I just caught my shoulder away and caught it. Steve Finn hit me and snapped the whole thing back. And it was never the same after that. I, 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 I couldn't protect myself in front of the net. They put one of those sour braces on me. I couldn't get my right arm up. Yeah. The game became no fun. I, uh, I, I ended up playing the next year in Providence, and we had a great, great team. And um, we ended up losing upset in the first round because the Bruins called up all our guys. And then they got yeah. knocked out that night against I Buffalo. I remember. Rob Ray or May, Brad May scored a goal. So long story short, I had a pretty good year in Providence. No? May Day, that goal. So, yeah, May Day. That's the one. That's the one. <laughs> so we had, like, we had Glenn Murray, Joseph Stumpel, Timmy Sweeney, uh, Sergey Zoltok. Uh, goes on and on. We had a great team. We were the first in the East. And, uh, you know, long story short, we, they call everybody up. We didn't play. But everywhere I went, I produced – and I just wasn't a good skater. I was an ugly skater, but I knew blue line in. Give me the puck. I'll go to the net. I'll pay the price to score. Bobby Plager told you, Chris, yeah. you've never seen anybody score more goals on his knees. You had an unbelievable shot. You yeah. could shoot from yeah, – it's unbelievable shot. Like, and crazy. I love the game. And back then, Tim, Chris, you know, we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to play. And I played on the line in the minors. 
with uh, Michelle Monjo, who's dead, passed away, uh, God rest his soul, and Dave Thomason from Western Canada. We're considered one of the best lines ever to play in the minors, you know, from a lot of people that did it for Cole. They call us the MTV line, Monjo, Thomason, VZ. So, they, Jimmy, that, that team, though, you won a championship in Peoria, right? Yeah, we won uh, that team there. We won. Uh, Bobby Flagler was our coach, and Nelson Emerson, David Bruce, Kelly wow. Chase, Thomason, myself, Monjo, Darren Beach, Tommy Tilly, Randy Scarter, uh, Dominic Lavoie. At one time, we had Dehe Beer, Patrick Wonski in goal. Curtis Joseph was on and off until we went up forever. I mean, we were, we were loaded. And, uh, that was 91, winning. right? 91, 91, yeah. We beat uh, Fort Wayne, who was coached by, well, Bruce Boydreau was playing. Al Sims was the coach, but they were good too. The, the semifinals, we beat Phoenix in seven games. The sixth game, we had a win in overtime. Seventh game was a great game, but hello hockey, like Contos, Billy O'Dwyer down there. I don't even know who the hell, but every game was good. And the IHL was a tough, tough league, but there was a lot of talent there come playoff time and stuff. And uh, it was great hockey. I made a lot of lifelong friends. The guys that I would never met if it wasn't for hockey, I wouldn't be meeting anybody from Edmonton or Porcupine Plains or yeah. Twister from Virginia. <laughs> but they all came to Boston. They all loved Boston. Then they read up about Charlestown and yeah. they knew all about it. Like, wow, like who, you know? So they knew all the stories. They used to be hanging clippings in the dressing room when they started getting paper, like they'd find somebody get an article and hanging up there about Charlestown. Something would pop up. Jason, these guys would tell you their stories, how crazy it was. But again, no regrets. I still love the game. Uh, I owe everything. In my life, well, everything I had was because of hockey. I, you know, mm-hmm. it's centered around hockey. Today, I still love the game. You know, I still love watching my kid, Jimmy, and my son, Nolan. Nolan's been up in the AHL in the East Coast League. Now, you want to talk about a grind? Those are guys I respect right there that still love the game, that are traveling on those buses. I did that. I remember sitting against the window going, what the heck am I going to do after this? <laughs> you know, what am I going to do? Oh, yeah. Know? Look out the window and the bus is going boom, 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 boom. I'm going, oh, boy. <laughs> you know? I used to sing the song with Skeegan, uh, Flint, Kalamazoo. Ooh, I can't wait to get there. Oh, boy. We're, and they make us leave afterwards so they put change in our envelope so we wouldn't get enough per game money. They make us leave at, like, say you have to get left before 12 o'clock and give you more money. After we get the fucking change and half the money. You know, that's how bad it was. Like, I think it was 15 of us living in one room at one time, you know? Yeah, just grab a room and get it. Fifteen years, grab that room. The other fifteen, grab the other room. <laughs> you know, but it was that was his back then. The game today, so much more money. It's good for the guys. I'm not one of those guys going, oh fuck that. But, you know, I always say this though. Look at Knuckles. Twenty one, twenty two goals playing on the line with Bob Gainey and Guy Cobb and on one of the best defensive lines in the league with three hundred fifty seven puck compelling minutes, and people are scared shit of him. You be making like a more than that. You want to talk about the kid from Washington? Uh, what's his name there? Uh, the big kid that's hurt, plays with Ovechkin. Wilson. Wilson. Chris Nyland would be paying that kind of money, okay? I never heard him complain about it. And like mm-hmm. I always say today, you got you got Wilson, who's a tough kid. You got the other kid that's with the Rangers now. Uh, what's his Reeves. name? Reeves. Reeves. But know what the difference was when I played? You had six of those guys on the minus, okay? And up top, you had two or three ones. And every night, those guys went into Boston, Chicago. You had to do it every night. It wasn't picking and choosing for mm-hmm. these guys. You look at the size of Chris, I always say, Fighting Dave Brown, those guys, 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, I used to bust chasing those guys' balls at dressing room because he used to be always college pussies. You know, the yeah. Western guys were the toughest guys in the world. You, you, know, you listen to yeah. the story. I used to wake up and finish the story for them because I already knew it, you know. But Chris, <laughs> Chris was fighting all those guys. Every night, guys were doing it, though. Yeah. Chris couldn't pick and choose, say he's going to fight in Boston type, but no, I'm not going to fight tonight. I'm going to play tonight. I'm going to fight so-and-so in the ranges. Every night, twist up. Chase, those guys did it every night. For every team had those guys. It was crazy, yeah. But Knuckles, did you ever lose a series to the Boston Bruins when you were with the Canadians? Uh, no, oh, no, no. No, no, I can't well, tell you At the story. end, at the very end. That at last the very year. end. I'll tell yeah. you why. Watch how I would roll in Hall of Famous. The paper the day before was like, here comes the dreaded has a nylon. They were all worried about Chris. No bullshit. All worried about Chris mm-hmm. Nyland coming in. He terrorized the fucking stands, the <laughs> benches, everything. And you have all these fucking Hall of Famers coming out. Rip, rip, rip. Believe me, I hated the Canadians like the Yankees. With Chris, though, but I loved him. But he terrorized the all worried about Chris Nyland. He was fucking playing games with everybody. The fans well, it's funny. Him. 
Right, Digger, I met you. I ended up meeting you um, probably after my second year, pro. At you were at Mary house. Mac, right? You yeah. were at Mary Mac at my uncle's house. With uh, Sully. You come yeah. over with Gary and Sully. And, yeah, Gary and Sully. And, yeah, and we ended up meeting, and then, um, you know, you followed my career more. Yeah. And I then followed we got, your career before that because you're a yeah. student kid. Yeah, yeah, but even more so. And oh, then yeah. we ended up meeting afterwards and yeah, becoming we, uh, took, best, friends. best friends after that. But it's funny. I remember reading a story about Chris Nyland. It was in like the time thing in the, in the globe. And you were down Sunday. back for tracks. The West Rock would drink the beers and shit. And they said, this kid's going to be playing in the NHL. So right away, oh, fuck the city kid in the NHL. Right away, we were hot. Like, everybody in the city adopted Chris. Like, no, he's from Charleston. No, I think he's from West Rock. No, no, he's from Dorchester. <laughs> you know, everybody, it was uh, Chris Nyland from everywhere. And back then, like I tell a story, you didn't see many pro, pro, pro hockey players. Tip. Like today, a lot of guys are made. And I'm not saying it's easier today. But I remember even having a scout, one scout in the stands. You'd be like, "Wow, that's a scout!" Today you go to a fucking intramural game, there's fifteen fucking scouts in the stands. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like, yeah, like thirteen-year-olds have like agents. Yeah, now. they got agents. <laughs> you can't talk to them. I can't talk to them. Can I talk to your agent? Yeah, talk to the agent. You know, it's fucking crazy. Like, let the kids be kids at thirteen. I, oh, Tim, you're so right about that, though. I used to say, this guy's going for the power play for my team right now. Fucking run the National Hockey League. He'll be in the power play next year. Watch this kid. He's nine years old. Yeah. And let the parents that believe that, what a letdown it is when you don't make it, though. Let Hockey the parents are kids. fucking nuts, right? Chris, nuts. every parent, every parent, soccer parents are fucking nuts. My daughter played soccer, get the fuck out. I was in the car with the fuck I can't listen to it. That's why I coached too. I'd be on the bench. And I didn't want to listen to the bullshit. It, it, and people are so fucking jealous. Look at the Wayne Gretzky story. He, it was like, they wanted to hate him because he was so fucking good as a kid. Wayne had to, like, Try to pass the puck 150 times to set somebody else because that ah, Gretzky, look at him, that fucking hun. He had an angle because he's good. You know I mean, because he's good, parents. Then when Wayne makes it, oh, Wayne, remember when they all love him again? These parents were fucking throwing fucking bowlers at him. Then Wayne makes it, oh, Wayne, remember we played on the junior team? I loved you then, Wayne. I knew you were going to make it. <laughs> yeah. Oh. You know what I'm saying? It's just it's so much jealousy out there. In, in my crazy. Is, my son's six, and he I, 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 a parent. Tim, I can, I can represent him if you want to. Yeah. Like, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He's choosing. He's got a couple options. Yeah, he's got uh, a yeah, yeah, they can make the right choice. Take your time with it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but one of the parents was like, "Where is he going to play high school?" I'm like, high "No school. shit." I'm like, he's fucking. He, I'm just hoping he comes back to the next practice. Yeah. I, I, he might not hate hockey by the time he's ten. I don't know. <laughs> hey, the listen, parents we're, are crazy. We're all, it is crazy. Parents, we want our kids to six years ago, let them fucking play. Yeah. You know. And then if they're good at seven, eight, nine years old, you'll see it gets better, better each year. And I always say this: it's a marathon. You got to work for it, hundred percent. You know, you got to shoot pucks outside. Um, you know, like they have shooter tutors now or whatever. You go pay a guy, uh, Rocky something. Go shoot. He'll shoot you hundred pucks back end. Get the pucks and go in the backyard. We had stolen nets from the Boston Gardens. No bullshit. We carried them home from the Boston Gardens for the right down the ramp home. I set one up in my backyard. I got a piece of wood, cut the four cars out. Want to get better on your shot? Go in the puck and shoot pucks, I tell my kids. You want to learn how to lift the fucking puck? Get a puck and then go in the backyard. I say, shoot the fucking puck. You know what I mean? Go do that. That's how you get better. And all of a sudden, oh, I lifted the puck. Yeah, because you fucking been practicing. The yeah, puck well, they got stick. YouTube now. They got like someone shooting a piece That's, of bread into a toaster. Yeah. And everyone's like, he should be on the fucking power play. Power like, play. <laughs> fucking it's watch all like, like, hey, get him like up he's, there. <laughs> he's been doing it. It's crazy. Yeah, it's just, like, crazy. It's, it's crazy. crazy. But and yeah. what happens is then it's everybody <laughs> keeping up with the Joneses. You know, so-and-so did that. I, I, I'll take my last fucking money. I'm driving on that trip. We're going to fucking Emmett. I don't give a fuck about you. I don't pay my mortgage. Fuck it. We're going. You know what I mean? Fuck it. Uh, I said, hey, Wayne Gretzky or Bobby Lewis weren't discovered in those fucking tournaments. If you play well, you'll be discovered. You know what I mean? Like, uh, just keep on playing well. They'll find you. They'll find you guys over in Russia, everywhere else. So they'll find you around here. Play well. They will find you. you know? So, dig up. So, we're talking about kids and hockey. Yep. Like. And I know how proud of you are, uh, your three kids, um, Jimmy, Nolan, and Collie, um, yeah. playing soccer. I know. Yeah. Um, uh, Jimmy, uh, like, how proud were you? And, and I, I couldn't help but be proud of this uh, kid for what he, he did, going baby. to Harvard, staying the four years, yeah. getting his degree, and then coming out and playing the NHL. Incredible you know, what, story. What's crazy, everybody busts my balls, you include. Where the fuck did he get his brains? You know, I always said, listen, Tim, I was smart too. I just didn't apply myself. <laughs> you were. <laughs> but Jimmy liked, liked thing, uh, uh, liked school. Come to actual, like he worked, he liked it. And uh, I remember him coming home and telling me, 
I'm going to take, he said, take the language. I said, yeah, you know, take Spanish. You can get a job like as a cop or in a courthouse because they always need interpreters. He goes, no, I'm going to take Chinese. This is like fifth grade. I go, Chinese? I can take Chinese talk, right? <laughs> He's telling me this is the way the world's going. I'm like, what the way the world's going, huh? I ended up looking at him and said, shit, this kid might be right. Fucking five years, five, fifth grade, call me, right? I go, I think you're going to start listening from now on. So he, he was ahead of that like that. And some teachers, he'll tell you, I got into it and, and, and opened his mind out about education. He, he took it to the next level. And people think, oh, Harvard, motherfucker, spoke Harvard. Jimmy was the, Jimmy was the uh, poorest kid probably at Harvard. And we stayed and took a chance. She got hurt. There wouldn't have been no money for him. Okay? But Harvard education... Is well, it's worth a lot more money and open up a lot more doors. And Jimmy wasn't convinced away. Oh, go on the energy. I don't need my fucking degree. No, you got to take one thing at a time. And Jimmy was smart enough, and it's not like with Harvard that he could have went to wherever and took courses online. Some of the courses for Harvard, you have to be right there physically, be in a classroom with seven to ten guys and finish what your degree is. And he had to be there. You know, it wasn't like you know, go ahead out. If I was at Merrimack and We'll finish your degree and send some things in online and do it how they do it. And that was that. And like you say, Chris, how, how they portrayed us as this rich, spoiled family. I'm yeah. from fucking yeah. longshoremen, all blue collar workers. You're talking about a rich family, far from it. You know, and that was the misconception that I couldn't stand. And I think if you talk to any guys that play with Jimmy, that a teammate will tell you the same thing. You know, just a humble kid that's lucky to feel like he's playing the National Hockey League. And, uh, yeah, yeah listen, he he made his way there. He got his degree, yeah. which is awesome. And you know, one of the one of the things he did take a lot of heat, right, for not going to Nashville. That's because that's because the NHL was going to try. He did took a lot of heat. Now, know what's crazy about that? Kevin Hayes the year before did it, but yeah. the NHL wasn't on strike. Adam Fox yeah. has done it. It's the NHL really didn't do anything wrong. He just took yeah. his thing, and became a free. And know what's yeah, crazy? Change every, the fucking rule if you don't like it. If every team wants that thing, rips him. Cool. Every team that rips them, guess what? Every team was contacting them, too. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I would never say that. I don't like it. But it's not he didn't do anything, and they're still doing it to today. How about Adam, uh, Kerfoot? Yeah. Uh, plays in Toronto. Toronto. He was coming out. He couldn't get a deal, really. His father called me afterwards and said, you know what? If he went to the minors, Jimmy, he might have got lost down there. You know how uh, – I forget, I call him Kerr, I forget his first name. What the hell is his Kerf. first name? Alex. Alex, a good friend of mine. I forget his first name because I nicknamed him. <laughs> <laughs> right? he plays with the... Anyways, the fire goes, he might have got lost in minors because there's a lot of good players. And I said, damn right there is. And you got other skulls pulling for That's my guy. He played Dynamo last night. You see him on that face off. He looked good. Then he's like, I look good. He's supposed to go 50, but he's great on face offs now. But you get lost in the shuffle. Kerr has to spend a day in the minors since. He took the, yeah. the next year, went over and signed with uh, Colorado. You know, a guy like yeah. that might not have ever played. No. And people know that because there's a lot of good players in the minors in this first round that's come in and the scout's going to pull. That's my guy. That's my guy. You know what I mean? You got to pull. As Brett Holt said, when you draft a guy high in the first round, he's supposed to be scoring. All of a sudden, he becomes that defensive checker and stuff. You know, a lot of times those guys are mistakes. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. But they still find a way. The smart ones can find a way to use their skating or become a defensive player and have a big presence in the league. But Scouting is a, there's no set thing on it. You know, the, you, you, in any sport, you think a guy's going to be great, and somehow something happens, or you don't know yeah, what's in the background. Know. You just don't know. You like, just what, do you, what do you look for when you're scouting in today's right, game? Right now, Tim, is the first thing you have. I know it's simple. It's a cliche. You have to be have to skate. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. like, like. there's so many guys that were good when Knuckles played, I played, that probably would never even <laughs> going to be able to play in American hockey league because they would have been overlooked. You know, just like today, the goalie, they want the 6263 guy. You know, Lou Lamarillo likes big goalies. So you really didn't want to look at the Andy Moggs or sizes like that. So skating, you can't send a guy to a development camp and put your stamp on it and all of a sudden get a call from a GM and say, Jesus fucking Christ, he can't even skate up and down the ice. Boom. <laughs> he ain't getting a fucking stamp. And I'm getting fucking kicked. I'm getting kicked out. I'll be in the fucking bathroom when they're asking me the next question. You know what I mean? <laughs> so you got to look for that skating. And today, those, these kids, you can say about today's game, fuck, boy, do they fucking fly. These kids they fly. fly. They fly. fly. Yeah. It's crazy. And it's crazy. And the conditioning of these guys, like, next will tell you, next showed up, we got a six-pack, the bag, and smoke in his mouth, right? But the old days, those guys got in shape with the training camp. Training camp seemed like it was a month long with games. I think one time there was like 11 games in the exhibition season. Yeah, you Remember went to Chris? camp to get in shape. Yep. Now yeah. they come into shape. You've got to come in with 8% body fat or lower. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
You know, fucking God forbid that they have a fucking snack on something. You know, you had a snack. You had to get a snack over there. <laughs> you know, so I'm more fucking sitting in the room with pizzas and beer talking about yeah. how he fucking scoring five goals. He, he got a brownie. You know, <laughs> fucking crazy. It's a whole different realm of guys. You don't like that beef with the yeah. Anaheim guy when they're up 5 1. Everybody's like, well, why can't they make it 6 1? <laughs> go do that to the Habs. And Chris Lyons, let me go poke Patrick Roy oh, when yeah. we're up 5 1. Guess what? You get your head kicked in for that. Just yeah. like there's rules in golf, I don't yeah, golf as like, What do you think was going to happen? What do you think? <laughs> but that's today. That's the guy's new thing. These younger yeah. guys. I'm talking guys younger than my son Jimmy. Yeah. Like at least Jimmy was taught from me at home. You don't fucking do that. Five one, you should get your fucking head kicked in. You know what I mean? Yeah. Five one, you're gonna you're gonna fucking want to poke him a little more. I don't think so. I know that team. They talk about that Danbury, Connecticut. You ever see that documentary? There? Yeah. yeah, yeah. How tough it was. And you guys looked at that roster. Twist, Chase, Lyle Oderline. The Reverend Robert Dirk, Dave Richter, Todd Scoey? Ewing. No. Who else? Scoey? Was Scoey there? No, no. Scoey wasn't with no, me. No, no, that's right. Uh, Ewing. I'm trying to tell you. Uh, somebody else on my life. We had seven or eight legit fucking heavyweights. Yeah, and I would have ate that f- team up, Jim. No, we would beat every team. Well, oh, it's yeah. like a guy like oh, me. Oh, no, that team would beat up. Yeah, if yeah. I would score on a team like that, I'd be like, there's no chance I'm celebrating at all. No, like, you no. know what I mean? Like, it's like, like I know when we used to go to Salt Lake. I'm just going to act like I'm not having fun. We're going to Salt Lake. <laughs> Didn't have Stewie Grimson there, the Grim Reaper. That's all I heard about that. My first the Grim Reaper, fucking thing. The Grim Reaper, you know, who I got to know a little bit. One time he told me in Knuckles, you guys are getting that check, that back check they always for selling autographs. Said, you two are getting it first. I heard you guys are connected. I said, no, Knuckles is not me, Stewie. You know what I mean? <laughs> but Stewie, a bright guy, but I used to always say, Stewie's twist his fucking best friend and cousin. Chase's best friend with Shane Triller, the other one. So here I am. Wayne Thomas goes one time. His coach says, goes, usually I'm fighting to get guys off the bench. We get twisted and chased. We're, we're going to get a fucking penalty for not having enough guys on the fucking bench. We I stay the fuck on the ice. <laughs> <laughs> Paul backs the coach. I remember a guy going on the ice doing a quick pair of Boom, he's back off. Like, what the fuck? And we want to play. Because we can twist her and chase around the lineup. And they, they, they were over there looking at chops, the other team. And Wayne's saying, fuck Ryan, all out. We need guys on the ice. There's nobody out there. <laughs> oh, what, uh, what's the story about uh, Disco Dan Bowles? Oh, I named him that. I named him yeah. that Disco. How, how did you name Disco Dan Bowles? Disco Danny B was sitting beside <laughs> me in Phoenix when I played the Phoenix. Dead series, like rock and roll, the hard metal, the like, hard fucking rock music and shit. I go, Disco, listen to some of this shit. Mellow the fuck out, will ya? It just stuck. <laughs> disco. Next thing I know, they're calling me the NHL. There's Disco Dan. He's doing the disco moves now. When they want to go Pittsburgh. Did you think he was going, uh, when you were playing with him, did you think he was going to be a coach one day? No, I didn't know. I didn't know that well. He he was a dead serious kid. Like, like um, you know, he comes out of the East Coast League. You know, he played a yeah. ball in green. I don't think he had great stats, but. but you got to give him credit, right? I'll give him real credit. Yeah. I'll tell you what he yeah. did well. He ate yeah. fucking pucks. He'd go out there head first and block pucks. Yeah. He was blocking pucks from everywhere. And he caught himself out of roll like that. And then Pittsburgh struggling. That's how crazy this is when you talk about how things work out. Pittsburgh struggling that year. They fight a coach. Here comes Disco up. They say to Tom Fitzgerald, hey, jump on the bench, Fitzy. Help out here. You know, Let's see how things go. Pittsburgh goes off and run. They win their first Stanley Cup. St. Louis is going to fire everybody. The ruby's gone. The fucking craners are gone. The stick fucking ship is gone. They're going to get rid of everybody. <laughs> right? They call up the yep. goalie, Binnington. Right? Yep. All of a sudden, they go on a fucking run in the rest of history. But right yep. before that, everybody's going to get dealt, cut, thrown out, everything. And see that? That little thing. That's why I always say this. They're ripping, ripping Toronto, the media. And Nux, you remember this. Steve Eisman, who they consider one of the you know, greatest leaders, they say, in hockey. You know how many years when... Detroit would lose to San Jose in the first round. Arthur Serbia would stand on his head that they wanted Eisman. Get him out of here. He's not a winner. Get him out of here. Whoever was running Detroit, uh, what's his name? He's like Jim in Edmonton now. What's his name, Tim? The old oh, Holland. Uh, Holland. Holland. Yeah, King Holland. And they always should stay with that team and add it. Okay, instead of getting rid of Stevie Eisman and that whole crew breaking it up, and look what Detroit turned in. It took them time, but now Stevie Y is considered one of the best leaders of, you know, of a team, but they were calling to get rid of that team. He sucks. Well, he did it in Tampa, right? He did it in Tampa, and now he's trying to do it As again a player, though, they were going to get rid of him. I was playing with uh, a kid, uh, Barry Potomsky, who yeah. grew up in Windsor, and, like, some of his friends are kind of like, well, Eisman's never going to win here as a player. He can't do it. The team sucks. They lose every year. They got to break it up. Well, they stayed the course. 
They stayed the course and look what the rest is history. Now he's doing in management too. You know, built the Tampa Bay team. And Detroit, well, he's back. He's Detroit back to Dubin right now. And Detroit you know, looks good. Man, Detroit's yeah. fucking yeah. You, get, you know, but I'm saying as a player, Tim, they wanted him yeah. out because Detroit. Got I remember upset. that. Yeah, you remember that? Yeah, yeah. I was Irby from, from San Jose. Was on his head. Yeah. So I grew up a Detroit fan in those early years. Yeah, they were like, you yeah. Know, and I man. remember the fans want him out. Get rid of him. He's never going to win. He sucks. See how if they get rid of him, he goes on. But he stay. They stay the course, and the rest is history. Yeah, and he became like a fucking. He was like a great penalty killer. Everything, face. you know, he started doing. Yeah, yeah. Then yeah, that yeah. was before they brought in Scotty Bowman. And they brought in a team that would, we you know, could play with those seventy-two. Of I mean, the old Canadian teams that were unbelievable. That Detroit team when they had Holly and Chelly also in that crew. Yeah, they had like twelve. The, that was scary. Fantastic. I don't know how they yeah. lost a game. It must have been out the night before. Luke Robitaille was like on the fourth. Luke line. Luke Robitaille, <laughs> Hall of Famer, fourth line. <laughs> yeah, Luke only had forty-five this year on the fourth line. I'm <laughs> yeah. bad. You know, but that team was scary. Defense, the whole team, and you know, goaltending on on out. You know, uh, it was unbelievable. You know, people talk about Daryl Sutter, and I, I played for Brian. You know, that, but I didn't really get to play for him. I but. love Daryl Sutter. Daryl Sutter, I'm, I'm a, a huge Sutter fan. I'm a huge Sutter fan. Daryl. The rest Darryl. of them. The rest of them, yeah. I'm talking about Darryl. not so much. Daryl was in Indianapolis. He he <clears> brought <throat> them to a championship, the Chicago Farm team. Um, Brian Noonan, who was my friend, was on the team at the time. They won the Turn Cup. But it's no coincidence that last year, Calgary struggled. Pretty much the same team. They lost G down to the Calgary. Here's Daryl Sutton. You see the way Calgary played this year? Yeah. He's, he's got to be a good coach. He's got to be a good no, coach. He is. To, it, he is. It no speaks question. volumes. He might only have a shelf life and burn himself out because after a while, the voices might go on deaf ear. But I tell you, you grab the guys that play for the Kings for him and they become our age. Think back and yeah. say, geez, I owe everything to Daryl Sutton. We would have never won. Yeah, you know? it's like when he got the job in Calgary, everybody said, oh, my God, Johnny Goudreau, these yeah. guys are going to hate him. They're going to. Yeah, no, they love him right oh now. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah, listen. They love him. He got them playing. And the right way. Listen, every coach has a shelf life. Yep. He, he, he's, he holds guys accountable. Yep. and he's No he, bullshit. He, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I love that. But today, things are different today. You got to fucking. You got to pamper these guys. You got to change pamper, their yeah. diapers. You got to fucking I think feed them their bowl iPads, knock yeah, iPads. iPad, <laughs> fucking iPads. <laughs> Tim, Jimmy, I, I hate the that. best I thing I saw the, the other night was Kreider. Yeah. Fucking taking that iPad from Savannah Jad, and he took it and fucking smashed it on the floor. I hate seeing the, it on the bench, too. I'm glad you brought that up. The worst. This, this isn't football where you're supposed to run down the field, cut and search until you break, hits the ball there, puts the ball there. This is fucking hockey. You know, it's a quick, fast game. When I see them on there, I go, what the fuck are they doing? That's today's game. I hate it. I hate it. I didn't uh, see Kreider do that. Yeah. You know, but it's amazing that uh, talking about Johnny Goodrow, a quick story, Jimmy played on that World Junior team. Yeah. And he was like on the fourth line, whatever. The gold medal team. I remember. Gold medal team. Uh, yep. For Russia. I didn't make the trip because I didn't think he was making the team. Long story, the America started off 0-2. They switched Jimmy up with John with JT Miller and Johnny Goudreau, and somehow that clicked, and the team went on and, and, and swept and, and won the uh, gold medal, which was a hell of a thing to watch. But I look back at that team. Fuck, the Americans weren't picked to win it that year. I look back. I said, how the hell can you not? Like, Gibson was in that. You look at that roster they had. It was unbelievable. Yeah, then I look unbelievable at the roster. roster. Then I watched the roster of Canada, how good they were. But – you yeah. probably played those, did you, Tim? The World Juniors? No, I did the World Championship. Yeah, Junior did the World. I never invited that shit. Yeah. We weren't USA hockey type guys, me and Chris. But uh, I'll tell you a story, though, with Chris Nyland. When he was younger, people would say that. I said, Chris Nyland was a guy on and off the ice you want on your side. Because whatever he did, he did it with passion. He did it with loyalty. I'm not saying that because I'm talking to the face. I don't ball suck. Nobody next will tell you that. <laughs> right? And that's why he made it. Because he... He didn't think, what the fuck am I doing? Just like that story where he's telling those dealer floor of them, God rest his soul, they're going to be in the dressing room. He really believed he was fucking going to the dressing room. Seventeen round, he thought he was going to be on the fucking top lineup. Because <laughs> he, he, we didn't know. Seventeen round, he fucking pumped, celebrating like a fucking bass. We didn't know the first round for the 17th. Canes love you. Fucking 800 pick overall. You're fucking going there. Yeah, you know? That is awesome. That's all you wanted was get in the door. You know, and, and him going up there thinking, he, I think I'm playing. His father told him, what? We are going to camp. The fucking war not broken. I was fine. I really believe you. Where the fuck are you going? <laughs> like, we got no war going on. I ain't going to no camp. And then, <laughs> then Nux goes up. He brings his father to the game. Goes up there. Next thing, they get the father and him in handcuffs. You know? Oh, in Maine. Up in, in Maine. Maine. Yeah. They got the father and him in handcuffs. I said, no. 
Fight Chris. You don't want to fight the father. <laughs> Chris, leave the father alone because the father will clear the whole fucking stadium right out. <laughs> you can fight Chris. You think he's crazy? Let him go. Take the father out of here. Chris is the easier one. Yeah. Like that's, yeah. That's, that's, that's how you always say. That's when you know you're in trouble. Yeah. Well, it's funny, Henry Jim. This, a... Remember the story, right? Paul Baxter, right? I ran Paul yeah. Baxter. Oh, God. Against the Penguins. I the run puck. him. The puck. And we oh. come off the boards. And, <laughs> and he turns back and he stuck me in the eye cut me yeah. so i drop my gloves. i go after him and he turtled on me so i try and rip his helmet off and get him can't they bring us the penalty box he's going my father now my father's at the game yeah. Yeah. and my mother and i get the penalty your mother box. loved it though your mother oh loved yeah it. of course she did <laughs> and and he's he's going i'll find i'm f I'll you this you. f you that he goes i'll get you in the other eye f you so he he sat down the box and I was fucking infuriated, right? I looked down and there's the bucket of pucks frozen. Yeah, I knew that. The white I grab a puck, yeah. I stood up and I Boom. went, Ooh. right, right yeah. in front of eighteen thousand people. I hit him right off the fucking head with it. Yeah, lock and him he out. got <laughs> he got lock fucking ten ten stitches. Yeah, and then you I tried to get aisle. him in the room. Yeah, with skates, I chase him. He's getting wheeled out on the fucking stretcher. This bad man's chasing with skates, going to get him. I said that shit travels. You're I said, be in prison today. Today be in prison. I, I, did on this, I did on the gladiators. Know what I said? Let me tell you. Chris didn't know it. That shit travels. I mean, everybody in it. That fucking that island knocked the guy out with a puck. He chased him with skates. My back's is out cold on the, on the fucking gurney. Chris is chasing. I'll get you. Get him out of the ambulance. Get him out. I want to hit him again. <laughs> Was he but, tough, Baxter? Yeah, Chris knows better than I did. He was a game. Yeah, he, because he was yeah, a, he was coached a in kid. Finland against, uh, and I played. He against coached against Finland. Finland, Salt Lake, and he had a loaded team of tough guys. Yeah, yeah. you know, he was a tough kid. He could he could fight. He could he could throw a punch, and you know, not a not a, a guy who fought all the time, but he could but fight. He could good, right? handle fought. himself. Yeah, he, he he was a Christian athlete though. So, so it wasn't Stewie Grimson. So we yeah. take your fucking head off and then be praying afterwards. You know? <laughs> yeah. I said that to Stewie. You know, how do you do it, Stewie? Stewie goes, that's, you know, how it was. And I, I love Stewie. I like listening yeah. to him on TV. I never play with him. But I give Stewie, yeah. Stewie, Stewie Grimsley credit. I remember he fought Dave Brown and did all right. He was a young yeah. kid, Stu. Then the next time he fought, Dave Brown broke his orbital or something. Remember that, Chris? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and Stewie got sent down. And I'm watching around. I said, oh, maybe Stewie's not playing tonight in the minors, right? He got a pin stick on his face. Maybe he's not playing Stewie's in the lineup. But know what Stewie did? He fought all the way again because he told me later, if I didn't fight again, my career was over. He had to go back up and show he could fight. And he just got yeah. caved in by Dave Brown, who was, as we've seen Chris fight Dave Brown with no shirts on. And thank God <laughs> you did well. That was big brownie was scary. You did well. Yeah, that was nuts. But like Stewie, give him credit. Caved his face in, and Stewie went out and did it again when he was healthy enough to go do it. That's not an easy thing, That's right? not easy to do, man. Not at all. When you get breaking beat up, your nose, any of it. Breaking your jaw, it. breaking your nose. Coming just, back from any of that's not easy. You know why? Because we all have pride. We all have pride. And when you get beat in front of 18,000 people, you feel like you let your family down, you let your dog that, who died seven months ago down, you know, your teammates down. You feel terrible. You know what I mean? But anybody that drops their fucking gloves and know they can be knocked out at any time, I respect the hell of it. I don't care if you did it once or twice. You drop, you, you drop them up in an NHL or AHL, IHL game or anywhere game. You could be fucking knocked out cold as a clam. It takes a lot of balls. Right. You know? Oh, it takes a lot of balls to do it. And you lived it, Chris. Tim, you didn't have a successful career because you were a pussy. <laughs> no, because you had to play tough or you wouldn't play. Yeah. You had to have some toughness in you. I don't care. Today, mm -hmm. a lot more smaller guys are playing. The game is more skilled. Back then, guys like Theo Fleury had to play like an asshole to yeah. play. And he was a hell yeah. of a hockey player, right? But And he had protection, too. You know? Yeah, so but Theo like would spare himself, yeah. too. Theo would spare yeah. himself, you know, and put up yeah. big numbers. But it's a change game. And like you say, I still love it. It's still my favorite game in the world to watch. You know what I mean? I, I would, when, when COVID was going on, with Jones and for shit, I was dying for hockey. When he came back, it helped. You know, just watching Sport and Benton. I still think it's the greatest people involved. And I always used to like when you meet people and they go, we met all the different pro athletes. Hockey people are the most humblest. You they hear talk that all with, the time. All the time, all right? All the time, yeah. That's because yeah. we were brought up. Well, drivers come from blue-collar families, nothing. You know, how hard is it to say thank you or yes, please, to, to a stewardess or hold a door for somebody? That's the way we were brought up. You know what I mean? And, uh -huh. 
I I I I love our. And games. think about that. What other sport like fucking football, baseball, Not basketball? That. What Not other that. sport gets up at fucking four o'clock in the morning to be there for a five o'clock practice? Nobody. No Nobody. one. Nobody. You know. You know it, 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 it speaks for me. Anybody who plays. I used to tell my kids when they were younger, and they were watching a game, and oh, he stinks. I go, don't you ever fucking say that. Anybody that's on TV is there for a fucking reason. Later on in life, they realized it. Yeah. Everybody's good. And there's a lot more guys below you are just as good that sometimes don't get a sniff. But I respect anybody that puts the skates on and has a career, whether they went to college or not. It takes a lot of shit. You've been putting up a lot of shit. Yeah, everybody thinks it's all glory. But how about when you get sat out, your family's there first game law, the coaches scream at you. A lot of shit we put up as hockey players. Both of you guys know that. Right. It's not all glory, but we love it, and we keep on coming back for it. We keep on coming back for it. We keep on coming back because we love the game so much. You know, that's what, you know, I think about hockey and the, the generations of the original six and how many good guys back then didn't play a, a Willie O'Ree breaking in as a black guy. I mean, that's crazy. Like Jackie Robinson, that's crazy shit. You know what I mean? And, yeah. Respect the hell out of people like that. I respect anybody who plays the our game. Yeah. So, Anything else, Max? Uh, what else we touch on? Oh, Harvard. Yeah. Like I told you, Jimmy went to Harvard. Timmy, I grew up in Charlestown. I didn't even know where the fuck Harvard was. <laughs> when we, we were over there, Harvard and was it's five only, miles away from Charlestown. It's, it's only five miles. Be, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. It's like, We'd be over there robbing bikes or something. You know what I mean? We, we never went in that area. It wasn't, it wasn't for us. We had our own little domain. But yeah, I was proud of Jimmy at Harvard. No one went to UMaine, and my daughter graduates from UNH uh, this Sunday. My daughter, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, thank you. There he is. Oh, there's a legend there, Barry Reese. Yeah, there he, he is. is. He looks Barry. like a serial killer. He, he couldn't wait to come in. Oh. Yeah, come on, Barry. Imagine Barry, how I do? Barry, how would how Barry do? do in Charleston? <laughs> Barry do all right as long as he with me. In no, that. He'd be protected. <laughs> he'd be protected. A lot of money okay. and credit cards. Barry, you're all right. Barry's all right. Set the bar up on Barry. <laughs> Barry, how'd I do today? Unbelievable, as usual. My favorite. I got two questions for you. All right, call my agent, Barry. I'll be on, I'll be on LA next week. <laughs> part two is uh, tomorrow. We'll do. The only thing, part two is good, but I need to keep the microphone. If I unscrew the fucking thing, I won't know how to do it again. <laughs> oh, hey, listen, um, what was it like? What was Plager, Plager like coaching all those guys? Yeah, you know coaching what? Twist and Chase and Bobby. Blue Bobby Blue was Blue. a player's coach. I'll tell you a funny story about Bobby. We had a little struggle, like maybe a two, three game spin. Bobby calls to the center ice, goes like this. The power play guys go down the other fucking end. He goes, I don't know how to run. I've never been on one. You guys go figure it out yourself. He was the perfect <laughs> coach, perfect coach for that team. Fucking yeah, he right. let us do our thing. And let me tell you, Bobby, God rest his soul, he was the leader off the ice. <laughs> he was drinking the case of being with us. You know what I mean, he was he was a guy, but he had to come to show to play. It was old time hockey. Yeah. Bobby didn't want no excuses. Next day, you're at that game. You better show up. You're sat in your ass. You didn't play. But Bobby wasn't an asshole at all. You had to just show up and play with Bobby. That was it. And we had, like like I said, we had a really good team. And a lot of us were together for a couple of years where I, I said we'd lose a lot, but we never got abused or never got blown out because the games would still be going on today. So they kept the scores reasonable with us. You know what I mean? And that's why I say poking a goalie 5-1, you don't do that shit. I mean, I, I thought everybody knew that, but I guess some guys <laughs> today don't know it. And fans say, no. well, why can't they make it 6-1? I guess the fans, some of the fans are changing, too. I don't know. You know, go poke, like I said, uh, Patrick Wild when that goes to that on the ice of no. 5-1. See if that ends nicely. You know? Yeah, don't. you know, it's funny we're, we're talking about that, but when you think of the old-time hockey and have been a part of that, you played in it, and Tim, you caught some of it, yeah. no question, right? But, um, yeah. God, it was such an error in the game. And, yeah, is the game really moving forward? Okay, it's fast. I get all that. A lot of talent. Everybody. But but who – and I think this is great. Who has a fucking coach who says, listen, I was never on the fucking ball. <laughs> yeah, the fuck that is fucking – that's classic guess shit. What, the John Brophy. Yeah. John Brophy, right? Listen to this one. John Brophy. He would be down there. He would go out with you after a game, right? Yeah. Fucking drink with the boys, get yeah. shit-faced. The next day – he would have you in practice. You do your practice. Then he skate you after practice. You'd have to go from one side, right? He'd keep a couple guys that were there yeah. with him drinking. Yeah. He fucking skate you instead of board drill. He you go across, jump in the penalty box, jump out, <laughs> come back, jump in the bench, jump out, come back, jump in the penalty box. That was his fucking board drills. Like yeah. he did crazy shit. I mean, make you push the fucking net, do all, but. Uh, you know, you want to drink with me? You want to drink? You yeah, can drink with me. Do. Bobby <laughs> yeah. Plager, funny thing. 
He told us to figure the fuck out. And, we, and, and like I say, we had a hell of a power play with Emerson. Darren Feach was a good player on the point for our power play. Yeah. David Bruce, myself, Paul was saying, we, 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 and, and we had a high clip, and Bobby didn't get involved in it because, you know, leave me the fuck alone. But Bobby used to be beautiful. He'd go out drinking. If he didn't want to go on the ice, guys, I can't make it. We only had one coach. There was no assistant. There was no fucking funny guys. On Goalie, bench, coach, yeah. Goalie coach. Goalie coach. iPad. coach. There was none yeah, of iPads everybody had an iPad. Like, <laughs> none of that shit going on. If Bobby would be hung over, they would say, I'm taking a big call for the prof, Ron Caron. I can't go on the ice. Bobby would see the fucking feet up the thing, smoke, I say, you ain't going on fucking ice. Get out there and do it yourself. Chase said one time, coach got thrown off the bench. Chase is like 20 years old. Next thing, he's behind the fucking bench coaching us. Right? What the fuck is he coaching? <laughs> he's got his gear on, and he's yelling at uh, Jimmy Manns with Indianapolis. Jimmy, you don't know how to turn left, you fucking dummy. I go, what the <laughs> fuck are you yelling at him for? You're dressed behind the bench as the coach at 20 years old. He's running the team now. Chase is the coach. Only you guys, did, you guys didn't have penalty. any nutritionists. That's for oh sure. no no that was that was the best. <laughs> the only time I got to play on the penalty kill, Jason will tell you a story. Listen to this: he throws me on the penalty kill. I steal a puck, walk in on a breakaway. I go pull a deke, hits a rut. I go in the net. The puck goes in the car. And I get cross checked by the goalie Verigod in the fucking back of the head. I go back. I said, I told you I could play penalty kill, right? So we go out drinking. <laughs> we go out drinking. Listen to this: we we're saying, oh. Middle of the night, well, three in the morning, my fucking knee's killing me. The booze will wear off. I can't get out of bed to go take a piss. My roommate at the time thinks I'm busting his balls because I, I, I like to bust balls, you know, all that. He goes, Will you shut the fuck up? It's three in the morning. I want to sleep. I tell him, I swear, my mom, I can't get out of my bed. Tore an MCL. Tore an MCL. And the worst guy. Couldn't get out of bed because the, the beer wore off. I couldn't get out. I was living in the bed, fucking sure as shit. I'm going to the darkness. I'm on a roll. I'm out. After the fucking penalty kill him. I went to pull the old deke, how you doing? Here's the back end, boom. I mean, I go into the net, the puck goes in the corner, and I'm celebrating afterwards. We win the game. You see that penalty kill? can't fucking move in the middle of the night. And my roommate won't help me out. He really thinks I'm fucking busting balls. Like, what's next? Come on. Then he finally get up. I said, I'm dead. Oh, jeez, you are serious. I'm fucking can't even make it to the bathroom. Yeah. Oh, we had some good times. Like I oh. say, today, some of those guys that bust their balls, they didn't talk to me because I was American, a privileged kid. You know, that's what they thought. For 35 days, I said, let me take you guys from Western Canada, one or two years, come into Charlestown, South Boston, West Roxbury, Dorchester, and we all know each other. Get that fucking can in, can't you fucking pussy. This is our game. See how oh, they yeah. would have liked it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. One to one went over pretty good. And I said, you know, think about it. It was a tough thing to do, Chris. You know, you, Americans were just. I'll never forget. Never I'll forget. never forget. Never I forget. almost had a fight my first exhibition game with Bam Bam, Bam, Bam Bajar. Yeah. And and I came back to the bench, and I fought on the next shift, but yeah. I came back to the bench, and Dave Allison played in the Ontario League. Big yeah, defenseman. Rusty Red. I played against him. Yeah, yeah. He, defenseman. He, he looks down the bench, and he says, fucking hey, college fucking pussy. college kid. Yeah. You ever been in a fucking brawl oh. before? Yeah, I'll show I you said, a fucking brawl. you don't know what a fucking brawl is. <laughs> yeah, I'll show a you a real fucking brawl. Yeah. Yeah. And then I went out and give it's it to Bam Bam the next shift and yeah. fucking see you later. Then Dave was, I had Dave eating out of the palm of my hand. Oh, yeah. A couple but of no, it's all, <laughs> see, what the thing is, though, those kids grew up like that. It's not that, child, so we didn't fight on the ice. There was no fight yeah. on the You didn't throw it out. But yeah. off the ice, off the ice, that was like common. That was like two plus two equals four. You could fight off the ice, you know? And I, I always say that. Uh, a lot of guys like didn't want nothing to do with, with not you know supposed to be at that age at the time fighting off ice, but most guys could walk away compared to Chris could fucking fight. You know, you look at Chris the wrong way. Somebody's getting knocked out. One time I went to lunch with Chris. We were at the <laughs> Bruins. Chris had two goals the night before against Cal. I forget who it was against Calgary. You broke your back the same game. Yeah. So we're at the New Bridge Cafe, and Chris goes, "Can I just finish this?" Uh, fool, now come on and sign it. Then the lady got nasty, young, about our age. Yeah, heck, it wasn't for Neely. Neely wasn't even in the line. You would have had two goals last night. <laughs> I go, oh boy, this is going to be good. Chris goes, walk by. I told you I signed anything, but you went in. I hope you choked with that. You stay just. I call him, fucking Jesus Christ. Walk out there, but Chris was trying to be nice, but you know how fans get. They want it now. They want the autograph now. You, know, you remember that day, Chris? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I me, me, you, and the other kid. The other kid was with, I think it was Chopper, Dave Thomason. It was Chopper. Yeah. Hey, I'll tell you a quick story before I go. <laughs> I'm on the bench coaching. I was sick with, you know, I hate to say the word. I hate the word. So Chaser brings me out there, and I'm going to coach the alumni. 
Al McGinnis is playing, Kuchuk is playing, uh, it goes on and on. We're playing another junior, Chase's junior blue team who are going with Brett Hull. So we're late in the game. I get Twister distracted. I throw somebody out there. So Twister leaves it as a shift on purpose because we're losing. And we're like, Twister, you got skipped over. Twister, you didn't get skipped over. I'm just talking to you. I was winking. Get the fucking guy out. We're going to tie this game up. Keep Twister on the bench, right? Fool around. But I still remember Al McGinnis, you know, taking it easy as hockey guys. So, and some of the young guys come down and gave Al like the deep trying to go. And the place was sold out where we were. I mean, Al come on the bench. He didn't say much. I said, you know, all they want to do it. Al come over the red line in between the red and blue. He fucking ripped one by this fucking junior goal. He goes, holy fuck. <laughs> Al, I go, well, I guess he, I knew he could shoot, but all of a sudden they poked him. He went out, bang. We come back, we come back and win a game. It was all for fun with stuff. But I still remember Al, who didn't say nothing, like a little kid trying to show him up. The junior kid, like 19 year old kid. Al stepped over and said, okay, you want to stop playing? Bam, slap trap. Uh-huh. Over the red line, holy fuck. You know, I mean, it was something to even see his thing, but I was coaching the day and we had some laughs. Bobby Plager, was dressed playing. I benched Bobby. Like he used to do me. Bobby, you're sitting here. Bobby, you didn't fucking get the puck around the boards. And Bobby say, fuck, fuck. That was his favorite thing. That was Bobby's favorite word. Every time we fight, fuck, you know? So I'd give like 40 of them. The whole bench was laughing. But we had a lot of oh. laughs. Uh, I still love So the kid's home now? No, no one's no, home? You- no, he just happened to work out at the gym. I asked him to do me a favor because he's living in Southie. I said, Jesus. I oh, seen Jimmy's Freddie, place. Jimmy yeah, bought place. Right? I seen Freddie O'Hearn, a good friend of mine and Chris's. Yeah. He go, what are you doing in Southie? He says to me. I go, Freddie, my kids live here. Can you believe that? Here we I are. Charlestown versus Southie. We hate each other. We got Southie with fucking movie stars and politicians. They thought we were probably yeah. whatever. I don't know what they do. But later Fire on, fighters, right here, bank robbers. Bank and robbers. We said they're fucking politicians and movie stars. Two Irish, all so, poor towns. So, Tim, each other. Tim, South Boston is Irish neighborhood, yeah. and Charlestown's Irish neighborhood. West Roxbury's Irish. Yeah. But those two, South Boston and Charles Charlestown, yeah, they from high school hockey games all the way to everything. They're always Going at colliding. Each other. Then later yeah. on in life, you get to know them all good guys. But we used to say, South, you fucking bunch of politicians and movie stars. Like the calls were ironed up and shit. You could yeah. go to a bar. You could tell who was from Charleston, who was dressed from Southie, just by the way they dressed. Southie kids would eye in their t-shirts. I see it. And Chris, we used to say, back in West Roxbury, fucking all rich fucks over there, right? We're saying all the way, let's fucking get them playing the Utah. We're going to get them. Fuck you, Nyland. And all you rich fucks. Rich fucks. They just go up and follow people over there. Fucking yeah. crazy. I don't know who to tell, tell us that shit. So it's crazy. I forget the generations. I know you're probably, what, how many years younger than us? 15? I'm 39. You, 39. Oh, Jesus, 49. Wow. Yeah, I'm like... 17 I'm, I'm, years yeah. younger, probably. I'm going to be 56. <laughs> no, I forget. 57 in September, yeah. I still think I'm fucking 19 with Chris <laughs> drinking beers at training camp and next is knocking guys out on the fucking ice at training camp. They don't touch Ray Bork. They ain't fucking touching Chris Allen either. <laughs> fucking, fucking bench up their brawls in fucking uh, uh, training camp. They ain't hitting Ray. They ain't fucking hitting Knuckles. It's like PTSD, just yelling <laughs> shit. <laughs> I remember Chris, Chris was beefing with Michael Connell. <laughs> Because they said they should spend his family, take yeah. the money out of his pocket. Chris hasn't seen Michael Connell to training camp. Chris tells Michael Connell how he feels. He says, Mike was a coach. Yep. Yeah. Been in the NHL for a lot of years. I played against him. And when Chris hit uh, Rick Middleton, OC made all these comments. Well, Chris happens made- to see OC, and he's the number one assistant for the Bruins. Chris basically tells him to go fuck himself, blah, 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 in his own words. Later on, Something else happened. I'm sitting there watching Clemens. Second time he had all those strikeouts. I'm with you. Remember yeah. that? At the Bostonian yeah. Hotel. Chris, Michael Carlo walks in with his wife. The wife went to the bathroom. He's seen Chris. He fucking did a 360 right fucking right out of this. As quick as I see like fucking Gretzky do a 360. Like, oh, Paul was gone. The wife come out. Where is he? Where is he? Where'd he go? She seen Chris. She go, oh, I figured out. Oh, wait, wait, right downstairs. Remember that, Chris? Yeah, That's he ba- he badmouthed me. He yeah. said they, they should take my money and hurt my family yeah. and this and yeah. that. And my mother called me that I fucking Mike O'Connell. Uh, so I got traded him. to Boston. Uh, I know. And I'm I'm in signing the contract, yeah. and I saw him in the front office. Oh, and he you came up. He says, "Hey, hey, said, hey, fuck you. Yeah. Don't come yeah. and be fucking nice to me now. Yeah. I'm here. After what you fucking had to say about me. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I know. so it didn't That's... start off too good no, in Boston with great, me yeah. and Mike. That's why I always say knuckles." Wanted to be a Bruin because he grew up with it. He was always a Canadian. You should never yeah. come to it. He was just, Chris had guys yelling at the stands. We, we had guys knocking guys out in the stands for him. 
Yeah, yeah. Section 27, fucking uh, in the loads. We got Frankie the Fixer up there. <laughs> yeah. Fucking yellow nylon sex up. Frankie the Fixer. Load seven. Yeah, 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 that's the guy. Yeah, right there. Bang. He's out for Some of you get suckered. Yeah, some of you get suckered. There's, there's, there's no way to get suckered. Frankie, God rest his soul, <laughs> fix. Grandstand, I mean, the balcony. Uh, seat seven. Yeah, that nit with the hat on. Oh, get him. Boom. He's out now. <laughs> we, we, guys getting whacked like they're getting hit with guns. We've had All he Frank said was, was like, skate. Over. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's got a <laughs> oh, but like, oh, uh, you know, Chris was always a Canadian. There's a funny story. Chris was going to go back to Montreal. But before that, Lyle Lola and him didn't like each other. I played with Odie. Yeah. I go, you like each other. And fuck you, each other. Walk my, the old goddess. I go, you like each other. I'm telling you right now, sure as shit. Chris gets over to a second tour, who becomes his best friend, Lyle Lodeline. I yeah. said, I told you. I played with him. I used to call him Raymond. Montreal, <laughs> lend him out to us. Yeah. Okay, I said, Raymond, what are they doing? Call Raymond. Well, Raymond, what are they doing after you for? Don't know how good you are. He was like minus 65 first that year, right? In pure. <laughs> the next year, he leads the National Hockey League in plus minus. He was led the league in plus minus next year. Oh, Odie. The rest of his history. Odie. Montreal yeah. didn't want him. They lend him out to yeah. Peoria. And on that team, I think it was like minus 30 or something. The next yeah. year, Lyle led the National Hockey League in plus minus. Yeah, I used to call him Raymond. Raymond, Raymond. Raymond. you don't belong here. Yeah, they just come out and they <laughs> get some work. And I said, yeah, that's right, Raymond. You'll be out there. Sure as <laughs> shit. Fucking Stanley Cup winner, Montreal Canadiens. What a good, good yeah. kid he was, Odie. I, I loved Odie. I got to ask you about, um, <clears throat> like, listen, the town. You saw the movie The Town Stapes, right? Yeah. Ben Affleck, okay? That's so bank robbery, Brinks robbery, yeah. all that. But years ago, 1950, actually, there was a a a Brinks, Brinks. robbery in Boston, in yeah. the North End. That's where they kept all the money in the warehouse. Yeah. There was a group of guys that went over and robbed that place. It's called There's an old movie called The Brinks with Job. Peter Fox. It was, with Peter Fox. was done in 1978. Jimmy and about four of his friends from yeah. Charlestown were in the movie, and it's yeah. awesome. I sent the picture to Barry. I'll send you the picture. Yeah. But they dress them up as all these little Irish kids from Charlestown and from the bank. Old Scully Square. Yeah, yeah, where, where all the old bank robbers are from. Yeah. It's it's hilarious. But I remember going on my first day, right? You had to be on the set from like 7. I didn't get home until 6 o'clock at night, right? I'm 11 years old. I go to my mother. I said, I ain't going back there. She goes, you want to bet? $75 a day, <laughs> you're going back. <laughs> Put it there. It was in August. They had some wool coats, wool sweatpants. I'm going to sweat your butt. And all they said was, cut. Cut, cut. I'm driving a fucking bicycle with newspapers and things like, there's a Herald American American here. Cut. I want to throw the fucking bike at them. I didn't know what the fuck had to do a movie. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. It would walk yeah. from Charlestown to Scully Square, then walk home. By the end of the fucking thing, I had, I was taking more fruit. We could have fucking had a fruit fucking store in my house. Yeah, take that. I was taking, we're taking everything for granted. They'd tell us, take one thing, we're taking the whole fucking thing. A lot of things old. fell off the truck back oh. then. Yeah. Chris wants to and everything came off the truck then. But you could tell Timmy some of these stories. I mean, we could sit for days, Timmy, some of the oh. shit. We don't remember half the shit, but if you if you say something in my head, it clicks. I yeah. remember all the shit. You know? But I used to take Chris would take me up uh when I first got sick to medicine, get my medicine. And Chris was not talking about history. He thought I was busting balls. I said, I know, I want you to talk. This fucking kid knew where about the history. And I would be intrigued by him. In the beginning, he thought I was breaking his fucking balls. Then he knew I loved it. <laughs> I fucking picking his brain all the time. Remember yeah. that, Chris? Yeah. Just like just like when Chris was younger, they used to call him Christy Nyland, not like a girl. Yeah. So I said, Chris, he go, break my fucking balls. I go, you were known as Christy fucking Nyland in Charleston. <laughs> right, Chris? Yeah. Yeah. I was. Like all the old yeah. guys say, you see that fucking Christy Nyland last night? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. True story. Oh. But yeah, you know, hockey, Tim, I'm sure the same thing with you. You got friends that you wouldn't trade in for a lifetime for the shit you've yeah. been through. I no, you were in Russia too for a while, right? Yeah, yeah. four years. Yeah. I played for Keenan. Oh yeah, in Russia, God. which how he thought that? it was like 1990 again, because oh he could say whatever God. he wanted. Oh, how was that over there with him? I would have been getting fucking shooting him with Russian gas when he's sleeping in his ass. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I kept the Russian gas. That was, I, what is the Russian gas? Anyway? I don't know. I don't know. It's supposed to make you like help with, because you'd have road trips there. There were like nine hour flights. And I used to always like, say we'd play the Russians on you see the Americans, a lot of things play the Russians. Well, this Russian team gets strong in the third period. I'm going back on tour. Yeah. Why do I get fucking strong in the third period? I mean, it's supposed to be for like recovery, but I I never looked recovery. into it. Recovery, they were fucking hitting with something. Yeah. They come flying out. The big red machine was coming out the third period, like nobody's on yeah. the ice. Yeah, no, I, I don't. Did know you enjoy your time over? It was like crazy. No, I enjoy. I mean, I would it was probably nuts, say, though, right? Yeah, but it was just different. You know, like they just they just. Well, you could be cut any day. They could steal your money. Everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. See yeah, you yeah. later. They, yeah. Oh yeah. 
I mean, guys I walk around with guns and shit. Like, well, one I mean, we grew up with that yeah. knuckles, but not in the fucking dressing room, in the hockey dressing room. <laughs> no, you're He's right. Shot, I, shoot him <laughs> right where you get him out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but it was, was crazy though. I yeah. hear. Yeah. Yeah. Right? No, if you weren't playing well, they tried to do everything to get you out of, get there. Out of there. Like, shut your internet off. They would I wouldn't <laughs> want to go to the fucking train if I wasn't playing well. <laughs> Yeah. Timmy went in with a bad toe. He's no longer yeah. with us like, right now. You I got I mean? diarrhea. They're just <laughs> yeah. like injecting. Diarrhea. I'm like, no, yeah, no. Tim's in bad injection. shape right now. What do you mean? You had diarrhea last? No. It's well, way yeah, worse than that. They're just like injection. I'm like, no, <laughs> yeah. no, I don't. Like, I wouldn't want to take nothing over there. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it's crazy no, how they. I, I'm glad I went over there. It was, you, you know. You experience you have a, it's a hell yeah. of experience. I, I still Jimmy, think about Jimmy, let him tell the story about Keenan. Like he thought Keenan might go. T- tell Jimmy about how you thought Keenan might Cause you were like two English well, guys from. Yeah, oh no, yeah, that's my boy. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I grew up in uh, obviously being from Chicago. I knew yeah. of him, you know, yeah. young yeah. Iron Mike. And then um, I got traded to his team, and they won it the year before. And he called me like the day I got traded. He's like, eh, like fucking knew everything about me. Like, yeah, you know, your wife's pregnant. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, I know yeah, you're, yeah. you're secondary scoring because they had the best Russians, you know. And I got that, and we're happy to, you know, I really happy believe to get there and stuff. Yeah. He gave me the, per, you know, if you to win two years in a row, you got to change like fifteen percent, like all this shit. Yeah, all this shit. Yeah. And then basically the next day I flew there. I saw him in person. They had a Ripped day the shit off. Out of you. Kind of no, same thing that you know, one on one, just you know. And then the next day of practice, you know, I'm, you know, I don't know anybody. Yeah, and he just comes like bombing in. I'm like tying my sta- skates. He's like, where, where the fuck Stapleton? You know, Stapleton. And I'm like, I'm behind him, I'm like right yeah. here. And he just turns yeah. around. And he's just like, what position are you? I never fucking heard of you. So you a centerman? You a winger, defenseman? Yeah. I don't know who the fuck you are. And I'm like, kind of just like, yeah, you Mental do. fucking game. But That's he good. he was good at it. Yeah, he's I good just, at it. Oh man, I, that was you know I was thirty at the end of my career, he thirty five years old. Games. And, I'm like looking up this. I'm calling the old players that played for him. Like, what do you do? They're yeah. all like, just tell him to go fuck himself. Well, that's you know? like Chelios like, and Chris will know better. This he liked guys to tell him to go fuck himself. Yeah, it like took Brian me a Noonan. Bit. Everybody thinks Brian Noonan <laughs> was his best friend because Noonan. He took him to Vancouver. He took him. Uh, he had him like three different places: St. Louis. No, Chicago. Noons. <clears throat> Noons I, right? I, we're both. We do a Blackhawk alumni stuff, so I see Noons a lot. We always. And Noons. Laugh and everybody about thought it. I was like that was my yeah. uncle Mike. Like Mike never even talked to me. One time he was always on me. Because Noons wasn't a great skater either, but Noons, you know, could score a stick. But Noons finally told him, like, a fuck enough. And yeah. He didn't love him, like, after yeah, that. Yeah, that's what he wait. Like, when I told him finally the same thing, I was just like, I fucking Enough's enough. Just, he started playing me, like, every other shift. And but the like, only thing, though, could you see him doing that to Chris, though? I'm just trying to think of this. I know he did that to other tough guys. But there's no fucking way he would have nah. done it to Chris. I don't know. I because honestly, was, just, I heard guys were chasing around sometimes. The Blackhawks they want yeah, to fucking yeah. Kill him. Even I think Messier said like the 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 thing about Keen is you just didn't know like what he, he was going to do. You just didn't know. He had no. no just he didn't want anyone to be comfortable. So like once yeah, I didn't in want while, anybody to come. Like give him that. Like you think about the guys that have been successful. Scott Bowman. Okay. No, I don't know, but he played games. Guys didn't like him, but they loved winning cups with him. You know, Montreal though. Hey, they, yeah. Everybody think, oh, he had the best team. Guess what? He had to manage those fucking players though. It's not easy winning. I don't give a fuck if you got the best roster. You know, he had to do something to keep guys off the edge. They hate him, but wanted to play for him. And I think I think, I think his method was just like he got, he was so good at getting everyone to kind of like hate him. Yep. That, that bonded him. He, the yeah. team. It was like he, the, the, the whole team was against yeah. him. Not against him, but you know was what I he mean. A, he wasn't a major X and O guy, though, right? In the computer, though, was he? Oh, okay. no, no. No, old school then, he huh? He fucking, he like came on the ice in practice. He was like, a, he shot, like he, he was a righty shooter, Straighty but he would have stick. a like, he would have like a lefty stick. Yeah. And it was just weird. <laughs> was yeah. Just yeah so he was more getting everybody to hate him playing. He was, was a, a he, yeah. I mean, by, yeah. you know, he would have me like skating like as hard as I could because he told me like my wife's cheating on me. Yeah. And I'm yeah. just out Shit there like, like my yeah, wife's yeah. not cheating on me. <laughs> yeah, like that's yeah, how yeah. I was yeah, doing. I know what you're saying. That I not mean, really happened, but this like, that's how good he was where he was just like, you hate, you just fucking, I hate mean, my, f- yeah. My dad said, I, he's like, my dad was like, that was some of the best hockey I've seen you play. And I'm like, really? Yeah, cause he had you that fucking wound up. Yeah, just like you didn't want to, you just didn't know what he was going to say. Tim, you know, how yeah. the fuck did he get the point across to the Russians that he was coaching? Over there. Yeah, he got know, fired eventually like a, over there, didn't he? Oh, he would just be like in a Russian guy's face, like, man, you fucking pussy. And like, you know, walk out in the Russian. Him? The Russian would just be sitting in the stall, like, you know, <laughs> just be like, Tim, what are you saying? I'm like, you're fucking flying was out he, there, Was buddy. he going, did you see him go crazy in between parents over there? Oh Jimmy, yeah, yeah! Breaking could sticks. Snap. Could they understand yeah. him? All the players? Oh. Could they understand what he was saying? Or no? no, that's no. what I'm saying. Like guys would like Russians would just be like you, you know, you know. Just, yeah, doing, going, there was a doing. translator, but he was you know. Not I mean, when he's he screaming like that. Yeah, he couldn't keep up. He's just you know, like, the other guy. You got to give the other guy credit right now. 
in the National League, John Cooper. Yeah, I, mean, I like guy, Cooper. I like Cooper a lot. I like he's won in the He won in the North American League. He's won in some other fucking league, the American League. Yeah. Which you got two cups now, right? Yeah. Two cups. Of, you got to, he has to be doing something that he knows no, how to John win. No, John Cooper's good. Uh, they, they got, he got great talent. That, that There's no question, the talent. But he keeps them together. They play for him. They respect him. Yeah. I like, I love I like Cooper a lot. No, the thing the about thing. Keenan, though, he was like a good, he wasn't like off away from the rink. He was, at, he was, he was a good, like he let me go home, you know, for six days to, to see the birth of my son. And I can wow. guarantee you, if Nobody I had a Russian coach, there's no way. So yeah. you're no saying way. if you seen him off ice in Russia, he'd have a beer with you. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Like he was, you know, he was, he was about family. Like he was a good guy. Like, at least, so, I mean, at least in my experience. You can say know, what you, you know, want about him. I don't know. Never got to play for him, but he won a couple of the Rangers. He took the Blackhawks yeah. to the Stanley Cup, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I know he had a debacle in Vancouver. Things didn't go there. But and then he won one in Russia, too. Won like, one in Russia. He was there for like two years. He won one, and so then they fired him the next year. <laughs> he like... has to be pretty good at the mental games, how to get people play. Oh, yeah. Well, is it, right? He's a psychology major, right? Yeah. He's, yeah, he's he went to St. Lawrence. I know that. Right? He went to St. Yeah. Lawrence. I and Mike, and he gets yeah. a nickname, I and Mike. So as soon as you hear that, fucking, we got Mike Keen, I and Mike. Guys just scared shit to go to training camp. You know, you I and Mike. don't know. Like the ice. Said, he's going to say yeah. shit that you just, like, just They say the Scotty way. Bowman was the same way, Chris. You must yeah. have heard a story of Scotty Bowman, right? I thought Keenan came under Bowman, yeah. too. Like, they were Maybe, because I think that was his guy. Yeah. In Buffalo, remember that? Keenan was in Rochester. Yeah. When Bowman was yeah, in yeah, Buffalo. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So they're probably, he probably studied his habits and his ways. You know, yeah. Scotty Bowman won everywhere. But yeah. they say guys hated him in Montreal, but they want to play for him. But not hate. I don't know if that word's strong. Yeah, yeah but they but, could. Yeah, it's just back weird. then, they could control guys so much oh, yeah. easier. Yeah, a lot right? easier. Fuck. Well, during Keenan time, too, they could. Not two way contracts. Today. You know, you, 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 there was no free agency. There was no movement. You know, you didn't fucking do your job. Yeah, the GM called the you, the coach. You listen to the GM today. Some of the coaches yeah. make so much money. like, Who's just the GM? Fuck you. I, I'm going to do my own thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, you send a guy to the mind to stay. It's like you got to talk to the agent, Everybody. the you mother, call the their father. There's a hearing on TV. <laughs> you got to call their hearing. therapist. They be call like, a hearing on TV. Everybody them. goes through it. <laughs> Fucking Everybody crazy. goes through the hearing, like the Senate. You know, they call it Senate down the minus. Oh, I don't know. You know? But coaches never made the money that, that they make today. So before, they were scared for their jobs. And if Harry Sinden called down to so-and-so as the coach... Say, why the fuck isn't so and so on the ice? That guy was on that fucking ice, so the coach is gone. Oh, yeah, you know, Rick Bonus. You a lot of things, Chris. Bonus. Fuck. Yeah, bonus, bonus yeah. Example. Bonus Dickie is the first bonus. guy to bring the Bruins, beat the Canadians. They had to beat him in series. He had bonus wins, he's fired the next year. And he went through about 84 guys on the lineup that year with injuries. Did Ricky Bonus, ah, that boy, Rick, did a good job. Bruins had to beat the Canadians, right? He's fired the next year. Ricky Bones. Ricky Bonus. He's back there with well, Dallas Lawson. Yeah, I'm happy for him, though. Even I am, though too. I didn't, I am I, too. He not, was a puppet in Boston, though. Yeah, but I'm happy you know? for him. He's old school. Yeah. Weak. Barry's when, back. He's, Barry's he's here back. To cut that, us. that was on the overtime goal. He's here to cut us. Oh, I'm going to cut right now. Last story. Bruins were doing it with Brad Park, Hall of Famer. Then you look at their you know, defense. Montreal was rolling out, Serge Levard, Guy Lapointe, uh, the other big guy, Larry Robinson. Then you got another seven, eight guys, Hall of Famers up front. You think back. I gotta give the Bruins more credit. They were taking the Canadians of seven games. To, with they hung them. with them. They hung. They played the ball. You think about it when hockey was hockey. Montreal has Hall of Famers from Dryden on out. They're gonna be eight, 10, 11 guys in there Hall of Famers. Yeah. Brad Pack was playing on one knee, and you're still one of the best defensemen. But oh god, I'll let you go, Barry. I'll let hey, you go. Hey, you Digger, we'll we'll talk. Thanks for doing this today, buddy. Tim, nice I love to meet you. you too. Yeah, you too. I appreciate you it. Ever it awesome. to I, can, I can listen all day. I love to. You know, <laughs> if you ever come to Boston. Make sure you wear your rod knuckle shirt next time you're on spitting chicken school. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs>